There's not going to be an intro for today's video, just because I feel like the subject I'm going to talk about today, it doesn't feel appropriate to intro it in the normal way. So today's video is going to be a little bit different. Today I'm going to be discussing the importance of good character writing and why a good character can have a genuine impact on someone's life. Just before we begin, I want to warn you this video will have spoilers in it for Stargate SG-1 as well as discussion of death. This is a video I'm primarily making for myself but I'm also making as an homage to the character of Janet Frazier. If listening to me talk about this kind of thing is not your, your street, that's fine. Honestly, I don't mind. Go watch any of my other videos and I will see you in the next video that's just art based. But if this is kind of your kind of thing, please stick around. Let me know if you want to talk about any other characters and I hope you enjoy the video. My boyfriend Rob and I have been watching Stargate SG-1 for the past few months. He'd seen it before but I'd not. We just passed episode 18 of season 7. This episode was the second part of episode 17, both called Heroes, just part 1 and 2. At the end of episode 18, it is revealed that unfortunately Janet Frazier died as a result of heroically saving the life of another soldier, thereby allowing him to return home for the birth of his first child, a baby girl he aptly named Janet. Before I go into my own thoughts and feelings about Dr. Frazier, I want to give you some background on her so you can better understand the gravity of her death. Dr. Janet Frazier was the Chief Medical Officer at Stargate Command from 1997 to 2003. During her tenure, she saved countless people from all manner of strange infections, afflictions and injuries. She went above and beyond every time she was called to action, and even when she was told to stand down, her unwavering drive to help people would not let her sit idly by. Not only was she a skilled medical professional, but she was also a combat-ready badass who had no problem arming herself in defence of her friends, loved ones and co-workers. Janet Frazier did many things in her time with Stargate Command, but one such instance that stands above the rest for me is the adoption of Cassandra. Cassandra was a young girl, just the age of 12. She was the last survivor of a whole planet, a whole race of people, and she was the only one left. And she was being manipulated and used as a weapon to destroy a whole other planet and in so killing herself. The team obviously thwarted this attempt by the enemy and Cassandra was saved. After she was saved, Cassandra could have been shipped anywhere. She was a liability to the American government, she knew all about their secret program and she knew about different worlds and she had had a bomb in her. But Dr. Frazier was adamant in adopting her. She loved her, she raised her, she cared for her and nurtured her into the young woman she is today. Usually, when a woman is preparing to go through pregnancy and give birth, she has the time to prepare, to get ready, to deal with a child, to care for a child, to let them grow into a person. Even adopting a child, you know you are adopting a child and you can prepare for it. Dr. Frazier had no time pre to prepare, but that didn't matter. She saw a girl in need and a girl that needed a home and that's what she gave her. There's many reasons that Dr. Frazier's death hit me as hard as it did, but one of these reasons is that she shares her name with my own mum. My mum died six years ago and it still feels like yesterday. So watching a beloved character who I'd watched for hours and hours and hours now suddenly die, never to be seen again, was something that was quite hard to comprehend. My boyfriend can confirm this, but from the point she died, there was probably 10 or so minutes left of the episode 
and I cried the whole time. That kind of gut-wrenching crying where it feels like your whole chest is going to cave in. It's like you can't breathe, but somehow the tears keep coming and they don't stop and they're hot and it stings and your eyes hurt and your lungs feel like they're empty. There's no words when you experience a death that hits you like that hit me. I think she's so important to me because especially as a woman there aren't actually that many strong female presences on TV shows or in films. They're there and they're normally kick-ass or strong or what have you but they always seem to be caricatures or they don't seem like real people is what I'm trying to say but for some reason Janet Frazier felt like a real person she really did that, that was, that, that's a testament not only to the writing which was fantastic but also the acting of the actress who played Janet Frazier Terrell Rothery She's a fantastic actress and there is no one else that could have done the job of playing Janet Frazier better. Now I'm not saying she's the only strong female character, especially not in Stargate. Samantha Carter is obviously a fantastic, wonderful character, but thankfully she's still alive and I'd like her to stay that way. Every moment Janet Frazier was on screen, she brought warmth light and hope to everyone in the scene and everyone at home watching. The characters rallied around her. It's very interesting to have a character that is technically not a main character. She's most likely a supporting character. But I'm I'm scared to keep watching because reflecting on her role within Stargate Command and within the program of SG-1 she was like the glue that seemed to hold everyone together. We as the audience knew that every time an SG team stepped through that Stargate they were most likely going to face death, destruction, pain and hardship all in an effort to better understand not only themselves but other races and to protect anyone innocent in need of help. What made it okay that they went into those situations for us as the audience was knowing that if they came back, as long as they just got through the Stargate, no matter what shape they were in, Dr. Frazier would be there with a gurney, her team and the determination to save their lives. I think Stargate as a whole is written very cleverly because it deals with something that we can barely comprehend. Other worlds, aliens, all that kind of stuff. But every single character feels like a real person, feels like someone you could meet. And I think that's why they're so important and so beloved and why their deaths mean so much more. A character like Janet Frazier, a doctor, a, a, a loyal, a, a soldier, a selfless person, everyone knows someone like that. And a lot of the time, and it's sad to say, but a lot of the time they're overlooked because they're there, because they're always there, because that's what they do, they're there to help. They want to help, they want to care. So when that person's suddenly gone, it's like you don't know how the world's supposed to carry on without them. Like the world has lost the key thing that made it bearable. Because life's hard, the world's hard. And the people that we watch in Stargate go through some things that 
we could never imagine. And they lost someone so pivotal to their survival that I fear for how they will continue. It sounds melodramatic and it sounds ridiculous, but this is what good writing does. It keeps you up at night. It makes you think. It makes you feel. It makes you hurt. It makes you laugh. It makes you cry. Good writing is so important. And you can really tell when writers, actors, and everyone involved in creating a story, or a show, or a film, you can see they care because you end up caring. Creating art has always been my outlet for my emotions. And this video and the artwork on screen are no different. Like I said, I mourn Janet Frazier like she was a real person. And this will now sit on my channel as a testament to her. If you liked me talking about this kind of thing, let me know. It's something I've not done on my channel before, but it is something I do enjoy doing. Just getting my thoughts out there and sending them off into the world. I'm not going to end this video in my usual way, just because I don't feel like it's very appropriate. But I just want to say that I hope you enjoyed this video and the artwork I made today, and I'll see you in the next one.